Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of my three-part series on separation anxiety. So in the last episode, I spoke about what separation anxiety is and when you're most likely to see it emerge in your baby or toddler. Today, I want to dive a little bit deeper into explaining why some babies and toddlers are more sensitive to separation than others and some of the most common triggers for separation anxiety. Welcome to the Early Parenting Podcast, where we help you navigate the somewhat tricky world of parenthood so you can love the crap out of being a mama. I'm your host, Jen Butler, and I'm an early parenting consultant and a mama of two busy, busy boys. Join me as I explore all things early parenting and deliver them to you in toddler-friendly, bite-sized lessons. Because let's be honest, your toddler is probably smothering pseudo-cream on the wall as we speak. I'll be dropping my hottest tips on baby and toddler sleep, feeding, boobs, behavior, and so much more. Are you ready to feel confident in motherhood? Let's dive in. This episode's brought to you by my free download, Eight Ways to Help Your Baby or Toddler Sleep Well Day and Night. If you want your baby or toddler to start sleeping for longer naps than 30 minutes or to actually sleep for a longer chunk than two hours overnight, then you need to know all the ways to improve their sleep because there's actually quite a bit that goes on. So to download my free guide, Eight Ways to Help Your Baby or Toddler Sleep Well Day and Night, Head to jenbutler.mykajabi, that's K-A-J-A-B-I, dot com forward slash sleep dash well. Okay, on to the episode. So let's talk first of all about why some children suffer from separation anxiety more than others. Your baby or toddler's individual personality or their temperament plays a huge role in this. Do you identify your child as outgoing or have you always said that they were more reserved or shy even? Different characteristics like this will determine how extreme your child experiences separation. For example, my two boys couldn't be more different in personality if they tried. Max is my sensitive little soul. He's very attuned to his feelings. He loves affection. And he's definitely gone through bouts of separation anxiety that were hard on both of us. Ted, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have a care in the world. He isn't super affectionate and goes as far as saying, stop kissing me, mum. I don't like kisses, which personally, I really hope he grows out of because I really just want to give him all the kisses. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. Force my love onto him, the poor kid. (laughs) He's very outgoing and I can honestly count on one hand the times I've noticed clear signs of separation anxiety. He's a lot more easygoing when it does come to separation. So I want you to have a think about your baby or toddler's personality. Our temperament is inbuilt and it we are who we are when it comes to our personality. But considering the different needs that differing personalities require will help you to have a better understanding and compassion for your baby or toddler if they're struggling with separation. Now on to talking about the most common triggers for separation anxiety. Remember from part one of this series that separation anxiety can be experienced by a baby or toddler whenever there is time away from you, no matter how long or short it is. So given this, some of the most obvious triggers are separations such as you going to work, daycare drop-off, or being away from home without them for whatever reason. Some of the less obvious triggers though are when the separation emerges in the form of mum or dad being distracted. So when you have your attention pulled in other directions, you're less likely to be as present with your child as perhaps they're used to, which can be a trigger for some babies and toddlers to elicit the behaviors associated with separation anxiety that I spoke about in part one of this series. So example of this may include when you introduce a new sibling to the family and you're distracted with a new baby or during times of high stress in your life. Well, you may find yourself less emotionally available and maybe even potentially physically less present. Another trigger can be the separation that happens at sleep. A baby or toddler who was previously going to sleep without issue can suddenly become very distressed 
at being away from you. And in fact, this is often a common sign of the 18-month sleep regression and actually can be a trigger for most of the sleep regressions that we do see across the board in these first four years of life. So how can we support our babes during these periods of separation anxiety? Well, this topic is going to be saved for next week where I'm going to dedicate a full episode to discussing this. So I look forward to you tuning back in again next week where I will cover that. So thanks for joining me today and I'll see you then. Thanks for listening to the episode, Mama. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to share the episode with a friend, with your mother's group or tag me at Jen Butler Early Parenting on Instagram. The more that know about this podcast, the more people I can help. If you're looking for support that is personalized for your babe and tailored to your family's needs, then make sure to head on over to my website, www.jenniferbutler.com.au and check out how we can work together so you can move through motherhood with confidence. Catch you in the next episode, mama.